Hello, everybody. Are devils in your church is what we're going to be talking about today. And I think that if a carnal Christian would be tuning in to this video, they are probably thinking that I am nuts. Um, but see, we have to remember that in Ephesians um, chapter 6, verse 12, we are told that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So if we can see it with our eyes, that is not who we need to be wasting our energy in fighting against. Um, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That is who our battle is against. Um, so are devils in your church? I can almost guarantee you they are. They were with Apostle Paul. They were where Jesus went. They were the Pharisees right there. Oh my goodness, Jesus said, you speak of the, your father, the devil is speaking out from you. Um, so yes, but do we discern it? Do we know it? I once knew a man that, and I am not downplaying this because when we um, take authority over the enemy, you bet because of our faith and trust clinging to Jesus, the enemy has to obey. But we have to also remember, we need to be praying God's will be done. That it all be orchestrated by the commander in chief. Well, there was a man who felt as though once he had prayed, he did not have to worry about being um, any devils being around him. And we were in a church situation and a devil was manifested in a child. Well, we that understood what was going on were able to minister um, to that child and see the devil flee. Just that child, just like in the Bible where it talks about that, that the child then went limp. Um, that is what happened. Well, that man was more or less dumbfounded because, see, he felt as though no devil should have been allowed on that property. How are we ever going to be able to um, discern and set um, people free by the, by the power of Jesus Christ if we aren't willing to put ourselves in that firing line and understand that yes we need to take authority that the enemy can't do anything else than what god wants him to but evidently god wanted that child set free that night and he allowed maybe even made in some way that devil manifest so that the servants of the lord could carry out the father's will so are devils in your church? I can almost guarantee you, yes. But are we discerning and knowing? Manifestations are one way, but what about false doctrine? That's where we're going to spend the rest of this is a doctrine of devils is just that it is from Satan and you and I have to be discerning and have to know the word to be able to know when devils are literally being proclaimed in our church a doctrine of devils being taught is that Jesus died spiritually and that he fought Satan in hell to win. Now see, it looks as though, what's wrong with that? Christians would say, Satan's still lost. Jesus won in this so-called battle in hell. Do they not understand? To 
To portray Jesus in a lie is to have missed the mark. They will, they have just believed a doctrine of devils in the church. I have face to face with people that I love have been told this doctrine of devils and they believe it. Um, there are, I'm going to name it because the word of God says to mark and avoid those that are in heresy. Joseph Prince, Joyce Meyer, these people might have started out well, I'm not sure, but there has been a sleight of hand and because people loved the character of people more than loving the word of God, more than loving truth, they now defend that character, that person over the word of God. It would disturb them too much to turn that TV off and not listen to that doctrine of devils any longer because they have grown attached to that person, dangerous territory, dangerous place to be. They, that narrow way has just been broadened by a lie. That door, that bullseye, Jesus is the only door. And that's why we're told that there are, if there another Jesus is preached, we are to flee from them, have nothing to do with them. The Jesus that is being preached in this doctrine of devils that had to fight Satan in hell is not the Jesus of the Bible. And when, when they stand before the Jesus of the Bible, which all of us are going to have to do one day, they are going to realize that they were hoodwinked by the devil himself. Doctrines of devils. Lies from Satan to have focus off of the truth. So more will go to hell. All the while appearing to be preaching and believing a gospel. The Bible warns that if any other gospel, in other words, which then Paul says isn't a gospel at all, in, at all, well, see, this is one. And yet there are those that are believing this. Our Jesus won the battle on the cross in his flesh, by his blood, not in some fairy tale make believe battle in hell with Satan. It is a gospel from Satan himself. The victory was won and finished on the cross in Jesus's sacrifice of his body, his flesh. Ephesians 2.15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of, co of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Verse 16, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. It's the cross, it's the blood, it's his flesh. No battle, false battle in hell with the devil. That is a doctrine of devils. Are devils in your church? We need to have discernment to recognize it in the pew, but also in the pulpit. It's got to be the pure truth of God's word that is being preached. In the church in Jesus' day, in the temple, in John 8, 44 and 45, he says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of ye, your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Verse 41, ye do the deeds of your father. 
We're talking, and he, Jesus is talking Satan, and he's talking to the Pharisees. Yes, devils are in the church, and the Word of God tells us that it will be so. But we need to have the discernment. We need to have the the wherewithal to know how to battle it. We have to know the Word of God to be able to discern it and know, no, that's a lie. That if your pastor says something unbiblical, pray about it and ask the Lord to open that door for you to gently ask him about it. He could have misspoken, but there's no reason why you cannot ask him about it. I'm reading from my journal all the little notes that I wrote down in here. Um, and then in 1 Timothy 4, 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's where I got the doctrines of devils. And it's, it's not preaching in the bar when... when um, Apostle Paul is writing this. He is talking about preachers preaching falsehoods. A false doctrine or a doctrine of devils is anything, any idea, any opinion that adds to, takes away from, contradicts, or waters down nullifies the true doctrine given in God's word. Guys, when the cross is not what's being preached, when the blood is not what's being preached, when sin is not being preached against, you got to get out of that church. You will dry up and die. Because something's being preached and it, it will not be the truth. Because truth is found in the cross, in the blood, and preaching against sin. We have to remember, the reason Jesus went to the cross is because of the sin that has bound mankind. It isn't to get rich. It honestly isn't even for our physical healings. These bodies are going to die. They're dying daily. But our inner man better be being renewed every day. But see, on the cross, Jesus defeated sin. He presented his own blood to the Father, perfect, as the one and all, only ever, sacrifice to be given. It's finished. But it happened on the cross. And to just plain put an exclamation point and show that he defeated death, that he was the conqueror. He rose from the dead three days later from being buried. That's our Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the gospel. That's what we need to be preaching. Oh, we are blessed to have a pastor that does such. Stays right on the bullseye. If you have a pastor like that, pray for them. Pray protection upon them. Pray boldness that they would continue to preach every word that God wants them to. Apostle Paul constantly exhorts and encourages true believers to guard against those who are peddling heresies and to withdraw from them. Yes, you can't just stay there. That's in 1 Timothy 6, 3-5. Any teaching that redefines the person of Jesus Christ is to be marked heresy and fleed from. I'm going to read that again. Any teaching that redefines, makes Jesus out to be a little different than the Jesus Christ in the Bible should be marked as heresy and fled from. You leave. We are deceiving ourselves if we do not believe 
that this is going on now in churches. Other gospels, other Jesuses are being preached and leading people astray into eternal damnation. But we were warned. It's right in the word. Another gospel. Anyone who preaches another gospel, that's in Galatians 1, 6 through 10. Paul says, let him be accursed. Do we understand the seriousness? The precious one that was trying to tell me that Jesus had to battle and fight and defeated Satan in hell. Do we understand that they were preaching another gospel that they believed was the truth? The Bible says they will be accursed. That is being damned. This is the seriousness of it. And yet we have loved ones believing such apostasy. But when we know the truth and we see the lies around us, what would keep our mouths shut? It's in hopes that one would be woken up. Come to their senses. But I fear, like how the word says, being seared with a hot iron, that they're just so hard and they want to believe the lie. God says that he will give them over, turn them over to the lie if they want it, if they don't want truth. 2 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4 talks about another Jesus being preached. We're warned. We must remember false teachers are servants of Satan and try to appear as servants of righteousness. Guys, that's in 2 Corinthians eleven fifteen. 15. It, it is not going to be. It is going to be because we love them. Satan, it's a, it's a, it's a snare. He will get our emotions involved with that person. And we will love that person. That even when the lies are then being taught to us, we will stay in that relationship rather than fleeing. That right there is when we have chose something, someone over Jesus Christ, over his word. Nothing, absolutely no person in our lives can take the place of our love for Jesus Christ. We must love him first and foremost and all else lines up after him. But these servants of Satan are not going to come in black garb with pitchforks and, and horns. They're going to come like a sheep. They're going to come as a servant of righteousness. That's why you have got to have the Holy Spirit of the living God, to have the discernment, to have the word of God in you so that with the Holy Spirit and the word of God, they're going to boom like a dynamite and go, nope, this is wrong. And that's that discernment and you're going to flee. We must. It doesn't matter whether it's TV. I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying if it happens to you, it's got to be happening to you. What I'm sharing here, it's got to be happening to you. You have to be exercising this daily, whether it's a TV commercial, whether it is something on Facebook, whether it is what somebody is talking to you at Walmart trying to tell you. You have got to 
be exercising your discernment and either fleeing or boldly stopping it right there and then and correcting it. The Holy Spirit will show. We must be as the Bereans. They examined the scriptures every day to see if what Apostle Paul was saying was true. Yeah, that's in Acts 17, 11. They weren't just going to believe, believe what Paul was saying. And you know what? Paul praised them. What could have blessed him more knowing these people are going to make it? Because they are not even going to believe everything I'm saying unless it lines up with the word. And these same people have chucked, most of them have chucked the Old Testament. We have to remember Jesus preached the Old Testament. Jesus didn't preach the new. He is the new. But Jesus preached the Old Testament. So did Apostle Paul. So did the disciples. Oh, how we need it. The entire word of God. But that blessed Apostle Paul. We need to be like the Bereans. We need to make it our heart's desire to ask the Lord to give us a desire for his word. To have discernment. Ask him to so, so that we would be able to discern lies that we would hear. That we would be kept on the bullseye, meaning the cross of Jesus Christ and anybody preaching anything other than that. We don't need, we don't want. We abandoned it. It must be kept on the bullseye, especially as we are almost to the finish line, everyone. Wouldn't the devil now want to get us off track? We mustn't. We must pray for the protection of us from the evil workers that are amongst us. Yes, in the church, evil workers, we are told that they will be there. Apostle Paul said after his death, he even warned, he says, they're going to come, wicked men are going to come in. They're going to be preaching heresies and it just made him sick. It's going on now. That's why it's called a remnant. The remnant have an ear to hear and discern. If we are not experiencing this, I'm fearful that we are asleep, that we are part of the problem. Jesus will protect his bride as what any bridegroom will. But he expects the bride to be clinging to him, to be clinging to his love letters to her. And by, by doing that, we will have the discernment. Every little prick of a lie, it will be just like a thorn to us. We'll discern it and we'll cast it aside. That's our Jesus. And he's about ready to come and get his bride. We must pray for discernment and pray for a love of God's word and pray that we won't love any character, any person, any personality over our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I know what it's like to have to choose. To not have fellowship any longer with those that have chosen the doctrines of devils. It's being acted out exactly as the Bible says that it would. The Bible is real. It is true. But most, they might listen to it, might say they believe it, but they don't live it. It's out there. Doctrines of devils in our churches, in 
and being spoken through people who call themselves brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. We have to know the word and we have to be born again to have the Holy Spirit. Those two together will see us across the finish line. As long as every time we choose, make the right choice. When that check comes to us, we can't stay in it. We must flee. Father, I pray that as poorly as I have probably worded this, I pray your Holy Spirit go forth and use this. Use your word. It's, it's perfect. Use it, Father, to wake us up, to give us discernment, to pray for those that are ensnared by false doctrine, that, Father, if there be a space for repentance for those who love the doctrines of devils, Lord, help them to want to repent. Give them a desire for truth, that they would be repulsed by lies. And Father, that we would love you, love the Lord Jesus above our very next breath, that we would serve you with our whole heart. And Father, if there be any that do not know you as Lord and Savior, that you would have watched this or that have gotten themselves entwined in doctrines of devils. Father, you had them listen to this for the reason to have them repent and return to you. I truly believe that. If there's an, an inkling at all in them, I believe that that is your hand, your, your spirit outstretched to them. And Lord, may it be, may it be so that repentance would come this day and truth would replace those lies. And Father, I do plead the blood of Jesus over this video that no confusion would come forth from it, that only truth, salvation, that your bride would be made ready. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless each and every one of you.